each one of you who has present to celebrate this World Kidney Day 2025. My special welcome to actor Siddharth, whom I had known from his childhood. We were neighbors at Chemius Road. And uh, my, uh, I welcome Mr. Ram Kumar Shankar, the managing director of Kemplast Group. Of course, you would know him as a, a prominent industrialist, but what is more important is that he is a kidney donor. Now, Madhu can't claim that he is the only single kidney donor in this stage. There is a competition. Every year, Madhu used to, of course, all of you know, Madhu Balaji donated his kidney to his uh, sister-in-law, Crazy Mohan's wife. Ram Kumar Shankar donated kidney to his wife, Priya Ram Kumar. So what a great, uh, uh, please give a round of applause for that. Of course, I made him lose weight before he could donate. <laughs> My uh, welcome to uh, Professor uh, Krishna Kumar, whom I know him. He's a dear friend. I know him for more than 30 years. Professor in IIT. We have had several uh, programs in uh, IIT. We made the acute dialysis machine in 1997. And he has been the backbone of the medical sciences department in IIT, which has been started two years back. And uh, where I am a professor of practice. Of course, the news is that we are trying to build a state-of-art technology hospital within the IIT campus. He has just visited uh, Mayo's clinic. This is going to be a tie-up with Mayo USA. It's going to be a big breakthrough for this uh, place. Of course, I know many of you have come today because the topic he's going to talk is very exciting, artificial intelligence and medicine. I've been in practice for years only using natural intelligence, <laughs> not artificial intelligence. But, <laughs> but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that the, with the scientific uh, knowledge of artificial intelligence, we can get better patient management. Definitely a better patient management. I'm, I, I'm, he will talk about it more in detail. But uh, what I fail to understand is, it's not going to change the doctor-patient relationship. Now, if you see the relationship of compassion and the confidence that the doctor initiates in his patient cannot happen with artificial uh, intelligence. I'm sure many of my patients would agree with that. Mohammed, who, who calls himself the hero of 1989. <laughs> and Lakshman, who has all come from Bangalore. I welcome all these people. Mohammed has come from Hyderabad. Lakshman has come all the way from uh, East, uh, Bangalore. And of course, my schoolmate, dear schoolmate, C.V. Venkata Subramaniam, who has come from Nasik. So I welcome all of you. I welcome uh, Madhu Balaji also. Of course, he is part of us. He has always been part of, Crazy Mohan has been uh, part of our foundation. And Madhu continues to be part of our foundation. Today, normally, in the World Kidney Day, I talk for 25 minutes to half an hour. Today, I'm going to talk less, for three reasons. First and foremost is that Madhu Balaji has requested that he wants to talk a little more. He is always welcome. I'm sure he can entertain you better than me. So we will accept that. The second reason is there is a person who has asked me, requested to talk less. Obviously, you would have guessed. Nothing, no other person than my wife, Lalita. <laughs> And thirdly, my voice, you would have seen, is cracking. And it is voice abuse. And it started one year back. So I think the answer is to give voice rest. So for these three reasons, I should uh, talk less. Now, coming to the World Kidney Day. Every year, it started in 2005. So every year, we celebrate the World Kidney Day. The purpose of that is to prevent kidney disease, to educate people, to detect kidney disease, and to prevent kidney disease. If you see the theme this year, are your kidneys OK? If I ask in this crowd, are your kidneys OK? I'm sure nobody would know the answer, really. It's difficult. How can you say whether your kidneys are OK or not? Because many of the chronic kidney diseases don't produce urinary symptoms. So you can pass normal quantity of urine, normal color of urine, and still you can have a serious kidney disease. So you cannot, if I ask you, are your kidney OK? The answer is no. You don't know. You require more specific investigations. That's where it comes to detect early. 
Can you detect early? Yes, of course. We'll look at it a little later. And of course, protect your kidney health. This is an old slide, which I have been using since uh, we started it, my talks in 1997. So you're amazing kidneys, but still we'll recall it. I'll explain to you later why. So the kidneys are two fist, kidney bean-shaped organs, size of the fist, each weighing 150 grams, located in the back. So each kidney has one million filtering units called nephron. Each kidney receives about 1.25 liters of blood per minute. So the amount of fluid that is filtered through the kidney is 180 liters. So if your kidneys are normal, even if the kidney function drops to 10%, if you filter 18 liters also, still you can pass 1.5 liters of urine. So urine output often does not tell you whether your kidney function is going down or not. Uh, we have given you these strips to you. So the first marker of a kidney disease is presence of protein in the urine. Protein are large molecular weight substances, don't find their way into the urine. They pass through the kidney, through the filtering apparatus, but don't go out in the urine. So if they come in the urine, that means there is a hole in your kidney. There is a protein leak, means there is a damage, early damage to the kidney. I think all of you have been given a strip today. This uh, uh, is one of the first time in the world we did it where you can do a home detection of kidney disease, very similar to pregnancy test. So you dip the strick in the urine and you can estimate the protein and sugar loss in the urine. So obviously you can know whether your kidney, is there a protein leak or not. It is the earliest marker of a kidney disease. So as I said, symptoms don't really tell you whether your kidneys are affected or not. Maybe uh, getting up in the night to pass urine more frequently may be a manifestation of kidney disease. Otherwise, it's very difficult. But more important is the signs. Most important is the blood pressure. So everybody, the moment they find the blood pressure goes up, they think it is because of stress and they run to a cardiologist. So these two both are uh, problems. In the sense, the blood pressure is very closely connected to the kidneys. The kidneys are responsible for maintaining your blood pressure. The salt that you take is removed by the kidneys. If you retain the salt, you will retain the water and your blood pressure will go up. So the kidneys are the most important. Secondly, they produce a hormone called renin, which again also raises the blood pressure. So if you, you should check your blood pressure and if your blood pressure is high, please look for a kidney test. So that's why today we have given you the most, the commonest killer in the world is hypertension and its complications. We have given you all, thanks to Karthik, we have given you all a complimentary BP apparatus today. So once in a while, you can check your blood pressure. Because your blood, don't think that you'll have symptoms with high blood pressure. You may not have any symptoms at all. So you have to measure it. Of course, if you get swelling, you know you have a kidney disease. They run to it. So the most important investigation I told you is in the urine. So presence of protein or albumin in the urine is the earliest marker of a kidney disease. I'm not going to go into the depth, as I said, I'm going to cut short my talk. Blood investigation, most important is the serum creatinine estimation. Nowadays you have formula. So you estimate the serum creatinine, calculate your body weight, height, you can express what is the purpose, percentage of your kidney function, what's called the EGFR. Of course, ultrasound is available all over the country, which can image the kidney, can pick up stones, tumors, etc., other surgical problems. Specialized tests may be required if you have problems in the other tests. This is an ultrasound which shows uh, the structure of the kidney. This is the old test called an IVP. You can see this is actually from a patient. So what you see is the dye, which is excreting in the dye on top, and then the two tubes called the ureta, watch I had drawn in the diagram, and then the urine goes into the bladder. So once we diagnose kidney disease, you have to correct the cause of kidney disease. For example, you are taking a medicine which can damage kidney disease. You are taking a painkiller. You are taking an Ayurvedic preparation. You are taking a Siddha preparation. You can always stop it and your kidney function is likely to improve. If you have an allergic disease that is damaging your kidney, again you can pick it up. You can then correct it and improve it. So first action is always corrective or curative. If you fail on that, you do a conservative management. That is, you restrict salt, water, etc. So you give less load to the kidney, so that the life of the kidney is prolonged. 
So the third stage only, the last stage, what we call the end stage kidney disease, you land up on dialysis or kidney transplantation. This unfortunate shape should not happen to anybody. We should be able to detect early and prevent from landing up into this condition. We have patients sitting here who have been, of course we have done a biopsy and got their kidney function back to normal, I'm sure. So it, it's possible. Now I'm going to talk about an interesting subject, which has, uh, because two weeks back, the Prime Minister spoke about obesity and uh, in the monkey bath. Of course, we have been trying for long for him to talk on salt and health also. It has not had happened. This is a typical problem of Indian, Indians. Trunkal obesity. Fat at the abdomen, thin in the arms. You will see anywhere. The moment you land up in the airport, you will find thin fellows standing with a big paunch in front. This is typical Indian obesity, trunkal obesity, associated with metabolic complications, insulin resistance, diabetes, strokes, all sorts of problems. Obesity increases the workload on the kidney, and it also increases the protein loss. So any form of kidney disease will become worse with obesity. Going back, yeah, so people think only weight. Weight is not the only criteria. You should look at, previously you used to have body mass index. Your weight alone should not be considered. You should take weight and height. So higher people are going to be more heavier. So it doesn't mean that they are sick. So that was called BMI. But more interesting now, you know that, this is for, present for long, is to do a waist-hip ratio. Your waist should not be more than the hip. If you have that, you have a metabolic problem. You are going to have either insulin resistance, you are going to have problems. So if you take a measuring, a simple measuring tape, you don't require a 64 size CT angiogram of the heart. A measuring tape is enough to tell you whether you are in trouble or not. You find all of them are like this. So that's what is happening to us. What is happening to this South American tribal man? He has never been exposed to salt. He eats only vegetables and fruits and has no exposure to salt. What is his average blood pressure? 96 by 61. His cholesterol is less than 100. He never dies of heart attacks, strokes, or kidney disease. He is only killed by the other tribal fellow or by an animal. <laughs> he doesn't die otherwise. <laughs> Tips. This is again going on for the last 20 years. More than that, I am talking the same. It has not changed. Reduce salt in the diet. See, salt, you should realize that people have a wrong idea that only if they have high blood pressure, I should reduce salt. The moment I tell a fellow, you'll say, oh, I don't have high blood pressure, why should I reduce salt? This is a wrong concept. Salt results in damage to the lining of the blood vessel. So you can get a stroke, heart attack, and kidney disease even with normal blood pressure. So this you have to realize that you have to reduce to the WHO's recommendation of five grams of salt from all sources. Exercise every day at least 30 minutes. Eat a balanced diet. Plenty of fruits and vegetables. Keep your weight under control. Avoid long-term prescription drugs. See, don't go on taking medications. Any medicine, modern medicine, Ayurveda, homeopathy. Don't think by swallowing some Ayurvedic or some homeopathy legume, your health will grow up. It's not going to improve. You have to exercise, take a balanced diet. That is going to improve. And of course, stop smoking. Check your blood pressure and sugar once a year. Check urine for albumin. See, the point is, why am I repeating every year? Because human memory is short. See, I will talk about uh, some disturbances in human memory. The first thing is transience. We talk today. Tomorrow you will forget the whole thing. It's gone. Second is absent-mindedness. This is a big problem. People go and take the medicine repeatedly. They don't know whether they have taken the tablet or not. Third, my friend is there, Mohan. Thought block. I know the name of this person. It's not in my tongue. I can't get it out. Thought blocking. <laughs> then you have suggestibility. The police use it. They show the picture. Is this the culprit murderer? He looks at it, says no. Second time he's shown. Third time he shows yes. He is the fellow. So you have suggested. Of course, misattribution. I, t I tell my brother always this. Just now he wanted to know who is my chartered accountant. It has changed. So misattribution. You attribute something to what is not there. So hey, Ravi has said, actually Mohan would have said, somebody else has said. So you get confused, but you believe it strongly. So it's not that you are wrong, but these are memory problems. Of course, bias, you are biased. This happens in many situations. Once you are biased, this ban is bad, you will always talk ill about him. Even if he talks normally, you will interpret it wrongly. So that is bias. Then you have persistent. So certain memories go on coming 
again and again. I put my, this is a World Kidney Day blog written by my classmate, C. Venkata Subramaniam CV, who is here on the first row. He's come all the way from Nasik. He got confused whether he had a heart failure or a kidney failure. So a couple of years back, he had breathlessness, swelling of the legs, his blood pressure shot up. He went to the cardiologist. He said, it's a cardiac disease. Then he rang me up from there. I said, you come here. Let's have a look at it. It's a kidney disease. He's much better now. <laughs> It's a World Kidney Day block. You can all write your stories in the World Kidney Day block in the international. Of course, I should mention the fourth uh, pig uh, transplant has been done in the world. This is the second one that has been done in the Massachusetts, and the patient has done well. It was done in the first week of February. Every time we talk, choose your animal. Choose, if you want your kidney is not failing, choose the animal and take the kidney uh, and then use it. So that's right. That's what is happening. It's called transgenic organs. And this is the second transplant done in Massachusetts. The patient has been discharged successfully home. He's doing well. This is what I would like to be. I would like to be a chimpanzee in the zoo. I mean, in the jungle. I would not like to be a chimpanzee in the zoo. Thank you. <laughs>